Hello, I'm JW. Uh, today we've got an item that's been sent in. This was sent in by Mark. And it's a power distribution unit. Essentially it's a metal box that's designed to fit into a 19-inch or whatever rack. And your power comes in here on this uh, lead at the back. And then it provides a number of outlets here to connect various bits of equipment to. And this one also has a switch at the end here. And uh, no idea how this old this is because uh, say there's no markings on it and doesn't even say who actually made it. But uh, no, it comes with this. Apparently, when you plug this in, it uh, trips the uh, circuit breaker, so there's obviously some kind of fault with it. Um, presumably, it was taken out of service and uh, shoved in a storeroom for whoever knows how many years. So uh, let's open it up and have a look inside. So here's the thing, and fairly straightforward just to switch there. Outlets here for the bits of equipment, so you just have a short lead which would plug in here, and the other end goes into the whatever equipment you have in the rack. And that mounts in the front. And then the power just comes in on this lead here, which has a normal UK plug on the back. Now the fuse this here is actually missing. It normally have a fuse in there with a little plastic carrier there, but that's been removed as this thing is apparently faulty. So let's uh, open it up, see what's inside. So there's no manufacturer's name on this or any date or anything else. So it could have been made at sort of any time from uh, yesterday to uh, several decades ago. In the case of this appears to be steel. Again, fairly common choice on these. And uh, sockets here, we've got uh, six there, but bizarrely they're in a group of four. And then we've got two others there, which are for some reason separate. So uh, not totally clear why that is at the moment. So let's see what we have inside. Well, we've got a date here for a start, which is something. So. Uh, Date there shows as the 13th of May 1998. So a closer look there, so there's your date, 13th of May 98. And uh, FFL, whoever they were or are, and a phone number. Of course that phone number no longer works because there's an uh, insufficient number of digits there. Um, earth stirred down here at the bottom, just uh, crimped on and just comes in direct from the mains lead. And then we've got the wire also goes across to the uh, outlet to the other end. This is the back of the switch here, so main just comes in straight onto the switch there and uh, just goes out again to the outlet over there. And just talks like a double pole switch and also appears to be of the illuminated variety. And then the uh, outlets here, they're all wired to the same connection, so it's, uh, there's no particular difference for them. And we've got this sort of four way piece here, and then for some reason, two single units there. And these are just plastic and they just seem to snap in from the front panel there. And again, for some reason, we've got red connectors here and then they've used a blue ones. So it seems a rather a strange choice there. You wouldn't normally if they're going to make these things up that they'd all be made from the same range of components. So uh, this doesn't look uh, too bad and uh, these all seem to be reasonably well secured in here. Uh, these two seem to be branded RS, and the larger one isn't branded at all. So not entirely clear why they've done it with four and then two separate ones, but uh, nevertheless that's what they've got there. So uh, let's just see if this uh, mains lead is actually damaged or defective in any way. Now I've just got this set to uh, continuity, so just press those together. And of course that will uh, beep there, so we should have earth connected to here from the pin of the plug, which we have, and there should be nothing connected to uh, any of those, obviously. Now, it's a bit of a mystery why this would trip the circuit breaker, because obviously there's not really a lot in here, it's just the outlets here, which are all wired with these uh, insulated uh, connectors here. And again, the same with the uh, switch there. And the cable does come through this sort of plastic uh, strain relief arrangement, so again, that's uh, perfectly fine. So uh, the only thing is if the uh, switch itself has either gone defective or the uh, one of the things has internally failed here on one of the connectors, but that's extremely unlikely, certainly there. So I think we'll just take the uh, switch out and uh, just have a look at that. Now it's just held in with these sort of spring tabs on either side, so I should just press through fairly easily, and we should just pull off the uh, terminals from the back. So there's the switch there, and it seems to turn on off okay. 
and double pole, and it does have a 230 volt lamp inside, as uh, you would expect. So if we put that to the on position, we should have continuity across the pairs of terminals here. So from here to there, and from here to there, and nothing across the other way, because although there's a lamp inside, it's going to have a very high resistance. Um, particularly if it's a neon thing or something, it's not going to show at all at the low voltage of this testing device, which uh, it does not. So uh, that seems fine, and uh, there's not really a lot else in here that could go wrong, apart from the, say, the wiring itself. Now, in terms of using high voltage to test, we can use uh, either some uh, modern electronic thing, but uh, in this case we're actually going to use this device, which uh, is a uh, megometer, and this goes up to uh, 1000 volts for the output, so uh, that should apply a uh, sensible amount of energy there. And it's one of these with the rotating handle on it. Now this particular item is actually brand new and came from China, but it's been modelled on the style of a uh, very old example of one of these. That was probably made in metal and that was sort of around in the 1940s or 50s. And they've essentially copied the design almost perfectly, other than a bit of uh, Chinese writing and even the fold over handle on the top. The difference is this is all made of plastic and obviously the original was made of metal. So the deal is we can just turn the handle it uh, puts out around a thousand volts here, so obviously we're not going to be touching it. And then it will display the uh, resistance here, so what we'd want to see is something up here towards the infinity end. Definitely not something down here at the bottom end there. So if we turn the handle with the thing uh, just open at the end. And as expected, of course, it goes up to the uh, infinity end there. So let's just connect it to this uh, device here. We'll go for between the earth and the one of the pins to start with. Now we're just testing the length of the cord here, still got it disconnected at the end there. So we'll go between that and say the neutral to start with. And then we shall uh, crank the handle. Well, again, that's fine. And now we can go between there and in here. Bend that uh, tab in there, we can just clip down in the side, so that's the line. So again, that's uh, pretty much what you expect. And we can also go between the line and neutral. So that's fine, so the cable seems to be uh, as you would expect it to be. Now what we can also do is to attach this switch back on here and we may be able to get it to light up, bearing in mind we're between the line and neutral. And uh, obviously if we're shoving uh, a fairly substantial voltage in there, then it should switch on or at least light up a bit. So uh, let's see if that's the case. This should read obviously fairly low because there's basically a, showing there's a fault there at the end. So uh, as expected it's showing fairly low. Can't really see if that's lighting up or not. So let's see if we can uh, see anything inside. Well, hopefully you can see that uh, is lighting up there. Turn it fairly slowly so the voltage isn't too high. Of course, if it went uh, very quickly, then uh, obviously it would light up very brightly indeed. So there we go, that uh, seems to work. And the uh, actual mystery of what was uh, damaged or broken in this will uh, probably have to remain a mystery. So we can always test between the other bits there, but it's uh, fairly likely that whatever the problem was is either no longer here or uh, there's some sort of intermittent thing probably on the actual cable itself. So again, that's between the actual plug part there. And I want to go for the uh, between the neutral and the earth. And finally, because if we don't, somebody will complain, we'll just go between the line and neutral for the outlets.
So that's a power distribution unit, and of course not a great deal inside, just basically the double pole illuminated switch, and then that just goes straight through to the six outlets, which for some reason were in a group of four, and then two single ones, so not entirely clear what that would be. Uh, the uh, actual name in the top there, which uh, I couldn't find anything for that, the actual area code of 01460 is actually for charred in Somerset, so I presume that's where the company was or may still be located. And uh, this particular thing here, this uh, rather cheap mega me type meter, this uh, came from China, and you can actually buy this on eBay and AliExpress and the usual other places. Pretty cheap, only in the sort of range of 20 to 30 pounds. I'm going to say modelled on the older proper mega meters from the sort of 40s and 50s, which of course were made of metal and very substantial. This is all plastic and it's uh, extremely lightweight, but nevertheless. Uh, it does do the job and it does output the thousand volts as described, so uh, nothing inherently wrong with that. So that's it for this one, and until next time, thanks for watching.